Hey there, this is John Martinelli from securityonlocation.com and I'm really excited to be able to bring you another episode uh, from Hack Lab TV that's going to show how to use remote code execution in a PHP web application to actually be able to gain shell access on the server. So uh, PHP barcode is a simple little application that will essentially create barcodes for anything. So anything you need a barcode to say, this will generate a barcode in PHP. Now, the vulnerability that was discovered in this application allows us to actually run a command inside of this code variable. So for example, if we want to see the name of the server and all that good stuff, we can see it's called HackWeb, what version of Linux it's running, it's running Ubuntu. So all that good stuff. So we have a little bit of a, a hack here because we can run commands through our web browser. Now the problem here is that we're very limited when we're running commands in a web browser because we don't have an interactive shell. That means that we can only run one-off commands. We don't have an actual terminal to sit down and start running other uh, exploits or gaining more information. So the whole goal of this hack is to take this vulnerability where we can run one command per web request and actually use that to acquire a shell. So the way we're going to do that is using SPipe. It's a small tool that we'll, we're going to have downloaded to the web server and then we're going to have it listen with a shell. So the first step here, well actually the second step, is to create a temporary directory to place our code. So we're going to do that by accessing this. The next step is we're going to download the actual S-Pipe tool. So you can see it's getting it from our site, Digital Offensive. All we're doing is downloading it into that temporary directory we created. Now that we have our tool, we're going to make it system executable. Otherwise, it's just uh, text. So here we're actually executing this code to make it uh, run. And then here on the step five, what we're going to do is now that we actually have uh, this, uh, the tool on the server and we can make sure we can run it, we're going to make a little shell script to allow us to listen on port 9090 with a bash shell. So you can see the code here. We use spipe to listen on port 9090 with bin bash. And we're going to put that shell script into temp sc run.sh. Okay. And again, we have to chain mod to make sure that this script is also executable, just like the tool. And then the final step here is we're going to run the shell script. So we're going to open up a, uh, an actual listening shell, just like I said, on port 9090. So I'm going to run this. Should be listening on a shell. Now I'm going to open up my shell access. And this could be anything, really. This could be your home box. This could be, uh, you know, an attack box. This could be a dedicated server. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to telnet into our web server at 192.168.82.130, port 9090. And, oops, let's see here. So you can see, see now that we've telneted into the actual web host on the shell. I'm sorry, on the, uh, into the port that we decided on with the, the shell script. And now we're going to start executing commands. So you can see that we have a, a little bit of an issue here. And it's saying command not found and such. If you type in ls, it says the command's not found. So the key here is actually just putting an extra space and hitting enter. And it says no such file or directory. So we'll do a listing of the root directory. So we can see that. That's pretty cool. We can uh, do a uname to get all the, uh, oops, let's see here and do a uname to see all the information from the server. So there you go. We uh, successfully broke into this web application using a remote code execution vulnerability. We we're able to have that web application download a backdoor, and then we we're able to actually acquire shell access on the server. So I hope you had a, a good takeaway from that because this is the same process that you would be able to use on any type of remote code execution vulnerability. You know, you just have to tweak it a little bit. So to see more of our videos, check out securityonlocation.com or www.hacklab.tv. Thanks so much for your time, and I'm looking forward to teaching you more.